Welcome to the Get Your Act Together podcast. I am your host, Kelly Reynolds, and today I have someone in an exotic location uh, as my guest, and I'm super excited to hear all about this. Uh, Lydia, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It is a very early morning in Bali, so early that you will not hear the roosters. Even they are asleep at the moment. Wow, that's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, come, I'll wake up for you, Kelly. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I don't usually do podcasts. Well, I'm not really that late. Um, I get out of cooking dinner, though, so that's good. <laughs> mm. So tell me uh, and the rest of our, uh, our listeners here, where are you from? What do you do? Uh, what, what, what's your deal? So originally, I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Uh, it's where I actually spend most of my summers every year. And then I have one of my bases to be in Bali. This year, another base will be in Portugal. So every year will be different depending on when you're speaking to me. But these two places, Vancouver, my original hometown, and then Bali being sort of my Southeast Asia home, which I really love and spend quite a number of uh, months here every year. Um, that's where you know my locations are, are usually every year. Um, I am a work reinvention strategist and a um, solopreneur coach as well. And uh, I actually, this September will be my 10th year anniversary in the business. So yay, I nice. survived. Congratulations. <laughs> 10 years uh, is a good anniversary, right? Uh, lots have happened. Yeah. Lots have happened That's quite an accomplishment. For sure. It is. It is. So what I uh, what I do is I primarily help mid uh, mid career professionals to repurpose uh, their experiences, their talents. Sometimes reinvent the way that they work altogether, like to make work not look like everything else that they know about it on a resume and be able to redeploy their skills towards a new chapter of a body of work. Um, so I start, I think the best ideal start point for my clients are the people that are contemplating being independent, you know, whether I want to be a freelancer, a consultant, a side business, not quite sure yet if I want to, I don't know, throw the baby out of the bathwater, so to speak, of everything I think I've ever known in my career, but wanting to explore um, what are some alternative ways that I can use what I know and create something that gives me more flexibility and freedom um, and doing it safely as well. Maybe doing it while I'm still working full time, right? Exploring different projects. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in ex experimentation and internships that we create for ourselves before we start to, I don't know, jump off the cliff and hope the parachute opens. I'm not that gal. So no, I'm, I'm all about sustainable change, <laughs> doing yeah. it slowly. And, and I think honoring everyone's types of change. Not everyone's going to be that, I'm going to take the biggest 100% risk, right, to do something big and different. Some people need tiny little actions and inches, and that's okay. There's no right or wrong to it. So my job is to help people find that groove, right, and be able to still take leaps, right, of faith and leaps of courage uh, towards something different. Um, and then what I support them to do as well from understanding their focus or what I call the what's right for right now idea based on what you know, based on what your lifestyle choices uh, are, you, know, you need in your lifestyle choices, the model of the business that you choose to be working on. Um, I help them to launch that business in a way that is really focused on the foundations of building the business properly. So instead of just, you know, where everyone goes right away, it's like, I need a website, you know, I need to decorate the online house and the brand. Um, and they don't, they haven't spent enough time really thinking about what am I building, you know, and how am I doing this work in, in a way that's in alignment with my strengths, with the way that I, I like working. You know, I work with a lot of introverts, for example, they don't market, they don't create offers the same way as other people, oh, you yeah. know, and, and being mindful, right? Being, being really mindful about like, how do I want to show up for my business? How do I want to show up to make money with my clients, right? What are the boundaries of my scope of work? Because as you, I'm sure you've been there, you know, as a new entrepreneur, oh, yeah. sometimes yes. we just want to offer all the things under uh -huh. the sun because yep. we feel like, please hire me because I'm so valuable. But you become kind of a generalist rather than a specialist, right? When you do that. So it's like, I always use the analogy of, you know, you're building a house. Uh, but if you do what everyone else does, which is go go do the pretty things, the shiny things, the social media channels, the website stuff, right? The photography and branding to look good in your business rather than be good in your business. What you're really doing is just like, I don't know, putting a, a sign out on your lawn that says open house, but you haven't built the house. Well, I love that. 
I love that because <laughs> I see that a lot. So many people are like, oh, well, I have to, I, I have to spend money on branding. And I'm like, no, you do not. No, 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 no. Like that's not, that's not the first $7 you're going to spend. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Like they want to get all the pretty stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't even know what you're going to sell. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what, mm -hmm. how to take people's money. So many people are so worried about mm. making a website. I'm like, if someone has a credit card right now to give you, you don't have a way to take the money. And they're like, oh, exactly. <laughs> right. All of those things. And also, and, and also, I think, you know, marketing, right? That word is such a mm -hmm. dirty it's word scary. to a lot scary. of people like, oh, marketing. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not a good marketer. Right. I get that a lot where people will say, help me. I, I think I'm really bad at marketing. And I said, I don't think that's the case, because to me, I kind of define marketing as like, how are you educating people? How are you planting seeds? Right. To people to warm up to your philosophies. Right. What you believe in. Like, what is it about your work that can be transformative for other people? How do you show and tell, <laughs> you know, what you know how to do before mm -hmm. you take people's credit cards? Um, and that is what it is for me. It's not like I need to learn Facebook ads or I need to learn how to the algorithm, hack the algorithm of Instagram to get seen, right? Those are the things maybe a course wants to sell you. But I think the most important part is really understanding how you show up and talk about this work, right? But how are you going to do that if you don't know enough about what your work's about, right? What's that framework where you take people from start to finish? Who are you really looking to invite to this work? Who is not the right fit for this work, right? Have you done this work before? Is it your first rodeo, right? So do you, have you tested this on anyone, <laughs> right? So all of those things, I think, impact the confidence people can feel about marketing, whether it's, or not it's their first time doing that service and they haven't done that work with other humans and sort of pretended that they did you know that that unethical sometimes that feeling yeah. of like i didn't i don't know what i'm doing and yet i'm charging this money that's part of what my clients can sometimes feel mm -hmm. right that's why a huge part of what i teach too is like no let's not make it your first rodeo when you charge money let's create a mini project that allows you to have a sample size of some humans and gain feedback collaborate make it better with people so that when you officially launch you can say, hey, I've got testimonials, I've got social proof, I've got experience, you know, to say that I'm someone that can do this. Um, so yeah, I have a whole thing I want to say about marketing, but I will not dedicate the whole show <laughs> to that. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. I mean, being having the confidence to know that you have the skills and you have testimonials to start out your business, like everyone's just, that's got to be amazing. Because um, I find that this happens with people that I've coached, I coach, but this all happened to me. Like I was on wall street for 11 years and I mm. was burned out. So I totally went and did something else for a while. I had a furniture business for a while. And then I was like, okay, I need to use my brain again. I, I, I have a little baby. I cannot be covered in paint all the time. So what can I do? And it was one of those things where I didn't know how my skills were transferable. And mm. I would have loved to have met you about eight years ago. <laughs> Cause I yes. think it's been so much easier to say for you to say, no, no, no. You have all these skills. Um, you can do this, this, and this. Like people pay for these things. And I had no idea how mm -hmm. to do that online. And I thought, well, I have to be a VA and I probably should have to do mm -hmm. social media because everyone said that's what you had to do. You know, like, but there was nowhere to really look and learn at that point. There's tons of courses now. Mm -hmm. And, um, but having that guidance when you're coming into a world like uh, the online world, probably, uh, if that's what you're, you know, you're, you're moving to, but it's so hard to go from corporate and then trying to build a business when you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So how, how are your people uh, like, is that, is it a lot of mindset shifts? Is it, they just don't even know that anything's possible out there? Like how I'm guessing by the time they get to you, they, they know something because they're getting to you, but like, where are the people that are coming to, where are they starting with? Like where, what are, yeah. Where, where are they coming from at that point? Most of the clients that I think found uh, have found me on my, you know, they, they, they usually ch learn about me on my YouTube channel. I do a lot of videos around career transition and starting a business, starting a meaningful business specifically, not just any business that, you know, I, I don't know. There's like a whole thing out there. Like, it's like, tell me the idea of how I can just quit my job for under $50 that I can start. And I was like, oh, yuck. Um, you know, my belief is, is more about like, um, maybe work doesn't have to be such a dirty word. You know, work can be something you enjoy. Yes, pays the bills 
else, but it can be an extension of who you are. It can be a reason to get up in the morning. And I think when we make work joyful, work doesn't feel so like it's so separated from like real me and then like work me, you know? Mm -hmm. So my job is really to help people like merge the, you know, the two personas, not to say that you have to be everything of who you are personally to your work, you know, sometimes some good boundaries are also a good thing. But I think more of who you are, you know, in how you work and what you work on and who you work with matters in work satisfaction, right? So when my community finds me or the people that will be in my community that finds me online majority of the times they're tr what is that trigger event or what's that catalyst for change mm -hmm. is usually something hard has happened like they had a meltdown like a burnout is a really common one yeah. uh people get burnt out uh it was very similar to my own story right yeah. of, of yeah. my corporate burnout where I literally um i'm not sure if you know the story kelly but my my whole thing changed was when um i was on a business trip in russia uh, i used to work in international national education in Canada. I was on the road six months out of the year. Um, and I was, and I, and I had, uh, I developed agoraphobia, temporary agoraphobia in a hotel room in Russia for three days. My entire body oh shut down. God. I had a panic attack that lasted for three days. <gasps> it was the most, uh, frightening event I've ever experienced. But what that was, was my physical body shutting down because my mental capacity had such a large capacity for stress. You know, so it didn't know, it couldn't send signals to my body that we haven't been on a holiday for three years. You work 65 hours a week and we're putting you down now, right? Like my head was always like, go, go, go. Cause that's the industry as well. Uh -huh. Everyone's like, come on, let's go. I mean, our bosses would call us road warriors for a reason, you know, like go yeah. on there. Um, and never realized, never realized this was unhealthy, you know? And so until that happened to me. So same thing with my story took kind of a bit of pain. <laughs> to have a little bit of a reality check. So for my clients, it's the same. Something happened. They either, um, they're, they're getting divorced because they haven't been home very much to tend to the family and to their spouse. Um, they are reaching health burnout, some sort of health scare, right? That's happened to them to force them to evaluate, right? Some of the choices they're making in their lives. The pandemic actually planted a lot of seeds in people's heads about, oh, well, maybe this is not... A, Right. Like yeah. I can do this, you know, from home or more importantly, man, I really don't want to be if this happened again, I want I want to have more autonomy, more choices, more options with earning a living versus just being paid a salary that might be risky if someone decides to lay me off or something happens to the economy, right? So, so usually there's a trigger event, right? That sort of is some suffering. <laughs> and then they start to look for what are my options? Do I have to give up everything that I've ever known to do something different? Um, and then what is, you know, can I do something that makes money and makes meaning? Is that possible? That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I was at Lima Brothers when like the movies that happen where the whole, you know, wow. collapses, like I was there. <laughs> all through it. Mm. I was uh, the next bank's employee for a couple of days because we were cleaning things up. Um, and I watched so many people that had worked there for 20, 30 years lose everything. And it was, it was like that place, yeah, I think, so that sad. really put me in a place where everyone thinks the corporate paycheck is so stable, where to me, it was almost the exact opposite. It was totally. like they they followed all the rules and now they're 65 years old and they've lost everything. Where it was like, okay, well, if, I, if I'm doing it for myself, then I have all, I have risk, but there's risk there too. So yeah, like just seeing that was a big catalyst for me. So I can imagine if people are in a place where they've been laid off or they've had things like that, where you're it, all of a sudden is like, well, this isn't as risky, this whole business idea. Yeah, absolutely. And also what else, you know, people always say to me, um, oh my God, the thought of sacrificing my, my job mm -hmm. for something uncertain, like entrepreneurship yeah. feels like, like a big ask. So <laughs> right. And I, and then I, I, I start to kind of think about, let's think about the word sacrifice, right? Sacrifice means you're giving up something you want for something you don't want. That's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. To me, what you're looking, what you're doing is actually an exchange. You're exchanging one reality of what feel, what is stability and safety and pleasure or happiness or success for a different version that potentially aligns with who you are today. Right. Because I think when we used to work, oh, we're going to sacrifice stability, sacrifice da 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 da. It, it plants, you know, language is important, isn't it, mm -hmm. for our psychology. And I think that when we say sacrifice, it feels like we're giving up something that we kind of want when we don't. 
right? And I think it's not to say that you break up with your job immediately, because actually my advice is, is the opposite. It's actually about building your financial foundations, right? Building your resilience, building your appetite for risk slowly, Mm -hmm. Right. So that when you do quit your job, it's not an emotional, dramatic moment where you might regret that, especially if you can't afford to pay the rent the next month. We don't need to add on more pressure to your plate. Things can be done more sustainably. Right. But we have to start to really understand what about this is not always it's never really always about the job. It's about what the job represents in all these other things that you are or not able to, to be able to do in your life because of this commitment to this job, right? Or this life potentially, or the way you're operating in your life where busyness is a badge of honor, right? Yes. Keeping up with the Jones, keeping up with the Joneses is part of your psychology and mindset versus something else that you know could be true for yourself, right? That's I think how people always say it's the jobs issue of only my job's better. If only my boss was such an asshole, you know, if only <laughs> blah, 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 right? If only, mm -hmm. but it takes us away from the accountability right to analyze where's our accountability to creating this life right where can where do we have control over the way that we can do things a little bit differently you know like i had to stay at my job nine more months before i decided to quit my job specifically right and sure i could have sludged through and went oh i really hate this job and you know suffer through it until the last day but what i had to do too to enjoy going to work still for nine months, right? Is to really understand that, well, first there is not permanent, right? This is temporary mm -hmm. until I can launch my agency at the time. Uh, but also where, where are the, what are the choices I'm making every day that makes my life harder? Things like not having boundaries, things like picking up phone calls from my, yeah. from my boss or text messages at 10 PM and not shutting off my phone and deciding to create reply to that email. Right. And, and then it's in my head. And that's why Right. And no wonder I had insomnia because I'm reading emails at 11 o'clock and then, and then oh, no, no, I don't reply to it in the morning. <laughs> I got, well, exactly. It's like, as if I'm not going to think about that. Right. So mm -hmm. not being, I was creating all the little elements of my world, right, at the time that enforced that kind of um, behavior and unhappiness. Right. So even being able to be aware of that can, can, su can support us to change what we can control in a bad situation as well yeah. and to right? use what you were, the word the words that you were using before like sacrificing a job well you're sac if you are switching it around and you're saying i'm sacrificing the freedom i'm sacrificing the time mm. you know like kind of turning that back around because i think that that's totally. when i i went from i have to build this business i have to work all the time to learning that i should maybe leave now i i work in my office and i go in my house they're the same building i work out here because i need to because i was the one who wanted to work all the time and then i realized that mm -hmm. I was just taking a corporate job that I worked all the time and coming home and doing the exact same thing here. And then yes. not, still not having that freedom and all the things that I wanted. And I think that that's a big thing that happens a lot. I had my second burnout of my life in, in the third year of my business. And ironically, in the highest revenue year I had ever made during that time. Oh, because right? you want to keep going. Um, right? And I remember going... Oh yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this happened again, except I'm the boss and I can't blame anyone else, um, you know, in a sense of by myself. Right. But what I remember saying, you know, to my friends and my therapist at the time was like, oh God, you can really take the, the, the girl out of corporate, but you can, sometimes can't take the corporate out of the mm -hmm. girl because even though I was in Bali, I was location independent, I was making great money. I had a team, like all the things that are the great metrics of, you know, oh, you made it. To better than for year one, you survived and you're thriving. But emotionally, I was a wreck, right? So it's like, hmm, that didn't work out. I thought it was the money that would make me happy or the feeling supported with a team or the prestige of a business that's working, whatever, right? But how I was working, how I was getting to that income, what I put myself through, you know, to offer five, six different offers each year, Right. Yep. Do more, 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 build a bigger empire, build, you know, that's what they, you know, all my colleagues are coaches as well. So it's kind of like, they give you this roadmap, like kind of like this, is how coaches uh, make money. You write a book and you do this and you, oh, okay. Mm, right. You just go and do it like blindly, right. You just mm -hmm. go for it. And then I had to stop. And it's the same question I really asked myself, except it's towards my businesses. Am I making the choices that, am I mindful enough to make these choices right now that are leading me to the life I really want to have? Right. And I certainly, in my opinion, mirrored, 
right? The way that I was getting to my own success when I was back in corporate, it was the same spirit, you know, it's the same like scarcity mindset, right? All that, that led me to do more. Thinking more is, is better and sacrifice, you know, the boundaries of what could be enough, right? And so yeah. that yeah. actually led me to that next question in 2015, because I was en route to building a bigger business. And I remember thinking, what if I don't want, like secretly, right? What if I don't want a big business? What if I prefer to have a cozy business? Like, what was, is that weird? You know, like when I think about my life, I'm quite a minimalist. I love close friendships. I don't have big groups of people that I love hanging out with. I love my little quiet life. I like time, you know, I don't, you know, what does that look like if I applied that to my business mm -hmm. and redefined success? What are, the, what are those metric success metrics for work, right? And what's that number that's truly enough for the life I want to lead so that I no longer have this, I don't know, every year, just for the sake of saying I want to make more, to do that that way, but have a purpose to make more. There's a reason to make more. And in, instead of being more, maybe less is better, right? As in not less is better, but le having less can help you to focus on better things that make that you know, more many things that you're actually allowing in your work life, more improved, right? A higher level of quality of a thing. Yeah. And mm. intentionally having what you want instead of just more for more sake. Exactly. And I feel like, well, that do you want a smaller business isn't exactly the best headline to sell some kind of course. So I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> that's probably why um, it's not that we don't, they don't talk about that. Right. I have intentionally. They kept, don't. Right. Like my yeah. agency is very lean for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. We, I, I probably could have grown faster if I wanted to, but I wanted to see my son and go paddle boarding and yeah. do other things, you know? Um, so I, yeah, I love hearing about other people who are like, no, I don't really, I, I don't want more for more sake. If I want more for a reason, that's one thing, but yeah, the, the ridiculousness of more. For no, you know, I mean, we celebrate and this is the thing. I think this is why I'm so when I do me, I'm so glad to hear you say this, Kelly, because you're like, OK, me too. I want a small business. So every time I, I, I find someone, I was like, you too. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Right. That's thinking about this. But I do think these stories, right, this this type of narrative around success doesn't always look like a Tony Robbins business or a Marie yeah. Forleo business or a I mean, those people are great. Like. So cool if that's where you want to go. But for anyone who want to have a different type of business, like what you know, Paul Jarvis from his book calls uh, a company of one business, mm, right? Company yeah. of one doesn't mean uh, you're by yourself and you're lonely. You do all the things on your own all the time. Company of one is about being being conscious and like with a brain of an essentialist of what's really needed in my business and who do I need that can help me in certain parts of my business, but doesn't always have to be full-time employees all year round, right? I, for example, hate managing people. I love working with people, don't love managing people. So what I've discovered, like when I used to have two, three full-time employees, I was the most miserable, not because they were horrible. <laughs> They're awesome. They're great. They like got everything done for me in my business, but I didn't enjoy that dynamic of having up to meetings on Mondays and Fridays, and then have this team huddle constantly when I'm hiking up a mountain somewhere else where that's what I really <laughs> want to be doing. Right. So I prefer to hire project-based specialists that are more expensive, but they are way smarter than me. I never have to micromanage. If anything, they tell me what to do. I you know. Love, I, I was love, like, I love that. Boss me around, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love that. Like, my team is very self sufficient. We don't have meetings. And everyone's like, what do you mean you don't have team meetings? And I'm like, they're contractors. They work on their own schedules. They know what they're doing. I hired them because they know what they're doing. And exactly. You know, I don't need to have seven meetings. God, what the hell would I do if I had seven meetings a week with my team? Like, I, like, it's just, that's not the way I work. I know that there's people that would love to that, but my brain does not want to. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's why it's so important to, I think, think deeper, right? About the mechanics and the operations of, of someone's business or all our businesses, because we have a different role to play depending on your personality. You know, like I will never, for example, hand off um, content creation to someone. When I tried to do that and outsource that to an agency, didn't like it. Didn't feel right. Didn't feel yeah. ethical, in my opinion. Didn't sound like me. And if anything, I lost 
I fell out of love with my own business because I was outsourcing the very things that made me love my business and be more in tune with yes. my clients and the world, right? Now, does it mean that I have to be the one scheduling all the things or do it? No, I don't have to do the admin part, but the parts of coming up with the ideas, thinking about what I want to write about, being able to continuously send these newsletters and my thoughts and my insights every month to my newsletter, that's me. I want to continue doing that. I don't want to have to schedule, create graphics, do all the other things that don't make my heart sing, right? And so choosing what's that job description or what's that role, ideal role, right? That I'm best suited for. That's my genius zone that, you know, is my thing. And then being able to know who to choose and, and work with and collaborate with that can take these other parts of business that are also important, right, away from me, then that's what I feel good about, right? And 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 like I said, time, right? Time is a currency for me. I think I think a lot of people think about this the revenue, right? If I make this amount, that equates to my success. But I know a lot of people that make a million dollars that have zero time off. Right? Do is that successful? Is to you? Right. Like we have to really think about that. So to me, it's not just money. Money is important. I, I love money to be able to fund my life and take care of me and my family. But time is also a currency. How much yes. time I get off every week. Right. How much, you know, if I wanted to, uh, you know, work on something important that requires me to do some deep thinking, you know, do I have time to go and do that? Or is it about constantly you know, client facing work and, um, you know, hustle, hustle, right? So even the flexibility of spaciousness in my calendar, that can tell me, you know, when I look at my calendar and there's a bunch of white spaces, I'm like, this week is a successful week. Right. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Right. So many people are like, oh, you should have all these calls booked. Some people want to have sales calls every day. <laughs> I'm like, when I get like, I have acuity and it'll send me a message on Monday mm. and it says, you have zero meetings this week. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And sometimes like, yay, that's so like, I love, like, I love getting on the like podcast interviews and I love getting on coffee chats, but sometimes like just knowing that I don't have to be anywhere and like, I can figure out my day. I love it. And thank you for saying that because mm. I feel like everyone else is like, you gotta, you gotta be on the phone. You gotta be on the phone. I'm like, I don't want to do meetings. I don't want to do calls. Like, <laughs> this is very reassuring, Lydia. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I mean, I, I like doing calls when it's like, you know, the, the right thing, like here, like I love these, yeah. I love conversations. I love it. Right. And when I'm on coaching calls, you know, with clients, love it as well. Right. And my group and yep. things like that. Yeah. Don't really care for any more calls beyond the, those things. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and I think it's great because you and I used to work in a, in a world where I think the, the story has always been about if we do more, we'll have more. Right. Yeah. And so being able to reverse that, narrative, you know, I don't know what it's like for you, but it's certainly been something I have to be very mindful about because I am a recovering professionist, a perfectionist. I am type A. I don't kind of want to lose those types of things about me because I am also really, you know, I can do a lot of cool things in my business from mm -hmm. that kind of spirit and attitude, but kind of knowing when that spirit and attitude no longer serves me, you know, where I'm trying to pile on stuff back to back on my day. Uh, I have to teach myself to be bored. You know, I have to teach myself to not add things to my calendar just because there was yeah. a free space. I could work on that a little. <laughs> um, I have too many things that I like to do. I, although in, in, in a way I've tried to like, instead of sitting still, which I'm not fantastic at by any means, <laughs> I've instead <laughs> like channeled it into other things. So like organizing, I want to organize something. I came up with like a, a whole database for my garden stuff. So it's at least fun. <laughs> thing. <laughs> yes. It's very pretty. It's got, pictures and labels great but like or being able to just say okay i'm gonna work like a crazy person today and then tomorrow like today i'm doing a crazy amount of work tomorrow my husband and i are going to go for lunch uh at this wonderful sushi place that my son will never eat at because it's his last day of school before spring break and i'm like i need to see him Amazing. by ourselves for the first because otherwise it's going to be you know 12 days of kids it's loud mm -hmm. here he's nine and it's loud so being mm -hmm. able to kind of pick and choose like, okay, I'm going to work now and I'm going to work hard, but then I'm going to not work or I'm going to take a break yeah. and I need to get out of there. And those boundaries exactly. have been super important in my life. So true. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, I I got to the point where I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't in a hotel in room in Russia for three days, three days. That's incredible. I don't even, it doesn't seem like the best place to be stuck in a hotel room, by the way. No. And it no. was winter. It was like January or February and oh. cold and 
cold in terms of all sorts of ways, you know, weather, pe- I, I, no one helped me as well. I just felt like really, yeah. m- this is not the place I should have. This is not Ill. the place to break down. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get that level. Yeah, my totally. hands stopped working last year. It was like a, about a oh. year ago. My wrists hurt so bad. And my thumbs that like, I couldn't use the mouse. I couldn't write. I couldn't wash dishes, everything. It just ached so badly. And I went through all this stuff and mm. I, I was like, it's just my body shutting down and saying, well, if, if I, if I shut your hands down, you can't work. And it was like, you know, like your body just takes over and it's like enough. And I just, yeah. I, you know, I did different things and I, and the chiropractor helped and all that, but it was really just backing off. So I, I totally understand that kind of body just being like, nope, you're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you're working with clients, is there a, like a niche that you're working with? Is it just, is it, is it certain kind of businesses they're creating or is it, um, just kind of the, the, the transition from, you know, what they are doing to a new thing that is your specialty? I think the best way to describe my, my sort of framework with how I work with people is sort of two parts, you know, part one is really about them and their career change, right? That's a really important one because we can't get into, or my opinion anyway, right. To go and start doing the, 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 all the moving parts of business gets hard if we don't know the direction that, that, that we want to take our work and how we want to do better work, right? Because in, in corporate, I think you don't, you're not encouraged to think about that. It's like every year, how do you do? It's more like every year, how do you get a promotion? How, every year, yeah. how do you get a better job that gives you more money? It's not like we're encouraged to think deeply about our tools and our skills and our, you know, the what else of what do we want to learn and add to that repertoire of our skills, right? We don't look and or we don't take a pause or necessary pause to reflect upon our skills or our work and understand where do we sit with what we know today, right? Because work changes us. We change as a human being and how we see the world. So sometimes just because we've been doing work the same way for 20 years, doesn't mean that if you actually took a pause to go and consider what, how else could I do this in a way that's interesting for me or serving a different marketplace or solving a different problem with these skills. We're not right. We're not encouraged to really think deeply around our careers, especially for people who have been doing something for like 10 or 20 years. Right? So This is the place where I start and what I call, instead of calling things like niche, I know that that buzzword of find my niche is so popular and, but no one really even knows what that means. (laughs) You know, they'll think, oh, it's a, it's a word, it's a demographic, it's a whatever, right? So to me, it's actually, I kind of call it a different thing. I call it the sweet spot for meaningful work, right? And there's three sort of ingredients, if you will, to get your sweet spot, right? First First thing is your, your strengths, right? The, the sort of ideal genius zone strengths. And what I mean by that is not all the things you know how to do, but all the things that you know how to do and naturally sort of flow when you do it, right? And it's all, sometimes things that aren't obvious. Like a lot of my clients are people, people, people. So their genius zones are invisible value things. They are not obvious stuff in the sense of like, they make people feel a certain way right? When they speak to them. Uh, It's not like a thing they can see right away, right? And so being able to support my clients to name these character traits, right? Name these parts of their genius zones, uh, understand what they want to take or or move forward in their skill sets. Like I know how to do accounting, for example, from back in the day, wouldn't want to do that for a job. Wouldn't want to do accounting for anyone else. That Even for myself, I can barely do it, but I know how to do it. I get it how to do it because I've been trained to do it, but it's, you know, it's like discerning what is, what, what do you want to do versus what you have to do right now that you can create your own role. So taking that inventory of skills, strengths, genius zone focuses is one sort of section of uh, the sweet spot, right? That it in- should intersect with the second part of the sweet spot, which is what I call deep interests. And I specifically didn't use the word passion because I think the word passion trumps people a little bit it's like oh god passion sounds so romantic and big so if i don't feel it's a lot of it is a lot of pressure it's like love you're one true love like you have to find that now and i think passion is less of a thing passion is more of an experience i can be passionate about all sorts of things doesn't mean it's the passion passion is a feeling an experience something that you create to make that feeling happen anything can become passion 
right? And so what I like to talk about is in work, what are some deep interests in terms of, let's say you're a copywriter and that's your genius zone skill. Great. Um, but you, instead of writing for just anyone in business, right? If a deep interest of yours is women owned businesses or unrepresent, underrepresented women that are doing cool things in tech, right? Or I'm, oh God, just a nerd about mindfulness and meditation and minimalism. And that's sort of the arena I want to contribute my writing to where so more people really can be armed with that skill or that new way of living, right? That deep interest is, is important to know, right? So that when you are doing the writing thing, you're writing on things that really bring you joy and it doesn't, and time will just flow. You won't be counting down the clock that I have to write, you know, Instagram headlines and captions that I don't enjoy if that's not your thing. Right. <laughs> um, and then finally, right. The third piece is impact is about how do I want to be one, a tiny little pebble in a ripple effect of a bigger ocean, right? What I want to contribute, what causes and things that I care about in the world, I want to contribute towards, right? Sometimes uh, it's, you know, like for me, for example, I have a big impact of what I'm proud to do in my, in my work is that I love working with women of color and I love working with small business women that, you know, when they get that thing that they know how to do, that sense of confidence helps them to really play bigger in the world in all aspects in their relationships, in their families. And, you know, and there's something about that, maybe because I grew up as, you know, in an Asian household, you know, I was, I was born in Malaysia. There's a certain way women are right sort of perceived and me being quite a opinionated woman, for example, was always, you know, Oh, not, not good. This is strong women. People don't like, or will marry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so there's some, there's some rebellious thing for me as well to go. I want more strong women in the world. I think that changes the world. I do. And so I, that part of the cause of right, really loving, like coaching women, doing more with women, having scholarships for women, right. That's the extra legacy. I, I hate the word legacy because it sounds really pompous, but it is that sort of lasting, I don't know, impression or lasting ripple effect of something that, you know, sort of, goes along with your business, right? That you can, you can talk about, recruit people that believe in that philosophy as well and feel a little bit more heart-centered in your business idea, right? So those three, inter, you know, what intersects between your best strengths, right? Genius zone to your deep interest to impact, I think really helps people to understand the work that they are really creating and for whom and how will they solve those problems in that business idea or that focus that's unique to their life story, unique to their approach, the perspective, the way they see things, right? Um, and so once once we get that part of the sweet spot and that that what I call the right for right now idea, because I also that's the other thing I believe in, everyone gets stuck from launching anything because they're looking for the perfect idea, the idea I yes. die with. Yes. Right? Like that, oh, I need to pick the right thing or I'll never live it down. And I think that's such, uh, I mean, I did that. So, you know, don't feel bad about it. I think everyone totally. feels that way, I that perfection, <laughs> right? Like, oh, totally. Right? And so I think what right for right now is just, hey, right now, this this idea, like when I work with my students, there's like these, these, the score points, right. That we give a particular idea. And those score points are not always just about, oh, it's marketable and it makes money in the, in the marketplace. Sure. That's one point, but other points of, you know, what makes that idea solid, right. Or more solid than others is things like, Hey, do you, are you already around the community of people that you are looking to serve so that when you are promoting, getting clients, you know, getting partnerships, you're kind of already in that world. So it's e easier, right? That gets a point, right? Is it something that you see yourself doing for long-term or is it a quick buck, right? Is it something you could immerse in, nerd nerd out on, upskill on? Does that interest you to want to do more here? If the answer is like, oh, no, I just want it because it's the trend right now. It's chat GPT, right? It's something. <laughs> then maybe not, maybe not that solid, maybe temporary, very seasonal idea, right? So there's different ways to kind of measure what is right for right now and then go with right for right now because the more you start something, the more you see things through in some capacity, clarity enters and then you can adjust, you can pivot, you can make it better as you go. Yeah, and, and you can try things, right? Like the whole idea of right, right now, um, you can try things, especially if you're trying to get out of corporate, you still have a job and you can try things and see what's happening and then yes. find out what you like. 
I thought I was going to like a lot of things that I did not like. Uh, I thought I was going to like working with certain people that I do not like working with. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you get in there, you're like, oh, this, this is not for me. But yeah. to go back to your first part, I thought this was so uh, brilliant because when you're talking about skills, it's not just about the skills that you have. Like, I know Excel. <laughs> I know how to use email. Mm -hmm. it, you're talking mm -hmm. about those skills that you don't know. Like when you were saying how you make people, th th that person makes another person feel. We don't, I mm -hmm. never really think about that kind of stuff. And I think it's hard for us to figure those things out ourselves. Totally. Right? Like, I, I can tell you, I, I know all the software. I can do this. But for me to say, like, the other skills, the non-tangibles, that, mm -hmm. I don't know that I would come up with a list for myself. So having that as part of your uh, process, I think is fantastic. It's so hard to see also our best thing. Our best thing that makes mm -hmm. us shine is very invisible to us because it comes so naturally. It doesn't occur to us it's that big a deal. You right, know, that's, that's why we can't trust ourselves all the time. You know, sometimes it's good to ask I don't know, just start with five of your friends, family, some clients, right? And just ask that question. Hey, when you think about me, you know, what, what do you think is my unique value? As in, what do you think I do better than most other people, right? And you'll be really sometimes really pleasantly surprised of like, you, you, you'll think, oh, they're going to say this because I'm such a helpful bee when it comes to this thing. And they don't say that thing, you know, it's another thing that's completely not what you think about when people, you know, why you think people love you and appreciate you. Right. So I think a lot of times when, when my clients give me a list of things they know how to do, they'll say things like project manager, right? Mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. And to me, they're just job titles. So they're very, we're very attached to job titles because that's the way yeah. that we have introduced ourselves into the world, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first thing people ask you, Kelly, if you go to a dinner party, what do you do? What do you do? What yeah. do you do? Right. Not what are you about? What makes you happy? What are you thinking about these days? Right. It's just what do you do? That's our calling card. And so when, we are programmed to think that's our only way of defining an identity is through a name tag, a job title. That's the go-to that we'll go to. I'm the project manager. And then, oh, great. That's great. Or I'm a doctor. Right away, I know what that's about, where you fit in in the world, right? But I think when, when I work with my clients, when they give me these job titles, I always ask them like, all right, we right, let's talk about how you performed in that job. As in, what did you do? Like, think about scenarios that you enjoy, like patient work, for example, versus this other part of the work. What is your most enjoyable part of that job that makes you feel kind of like time just passes and you're in the zone, right? And then also, right, how have people given you that feedback in terms of being a doctor to them or being, right, that role to them in ways that are, you didn't realize you were doing, right? So sometimes going back to even like things like, I don't know, feedback forms from your employer assessments or asking your colleagues what what's the best favorite thing they rely on you for, right? Or right, it it will get to a, a deeper the meat of of how things are, you know. Like I work with a lot of project managers, for example, they'll say, I'm great at project managers. Like, which part? Because some project managers are excellent because they have amazing talent spotting skills. They built the best teams. They somehow magically make everyone get along. It you know, flows like a smooth operation. Everyone's having fun. Everyone's on the deadlines. And you're an excellent project manager, just par partly because you're so friendly, that you make people feel good, that you follow up really effectively. You hold people accountable and you have a camaraderie effect in how you bring teams together. And that's what makes you a great project manager. For someone else, it's their way of looking at how, how can we make things simpler? You know, how do we not, not complicate this? So they're looking out for tools and strategies and process flows in ways that are like simple is better, less is more. That's why my projects are successful, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully that gave some good examples of like how to think about that job title skill set in a more deeper capacity, which I think will open up, right? A way of just even being confident in yourself of knowing yeah. I've got more to offer. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, because when you're transitioning from, I was this title and now I want to go do something. And I, the confidence that you have no skills. I hear a lot, a lot of times mm -hmm. when I, you know, people come to talk to me, I've just started my business, but, oh, I don't really know anything or I don't really have any skills. I'm just starting out. And I'm like, you have this enormous wealth of like information that you've accumulated in your head. Like you have these skills and you need to transfer them. And it that. also makes you stand out because there always be people that do what we do, right? There's another coach, there's another VA, there's mm -hmm. another OBM, there's another copywriter, right? All sorts. So if we all just rely on selling the job itself, 
you ain't going to get picked in the sense of that there's nothing for me to say you're unique. So the, the one thing that people can't duplicate, people can duplicate jobs, they can duplicate packages and all that sort of stuff. But what isn't duplicatable, right, is that, that other imprint, which is things like your personality. That counts. I have yeah. hired web designers just simply because I have fun. Like every time I get on a call, it's, it's fun. It doesn't feel like, oh, God, another copy page of boring Google Docs he's going to make me do. Like it's like a fun notion board instead. You know, it's like, or he'll be like, don't write anything. Let's just do an interview and I'll record it and transcribe it. I'll be like, holy like, crap, you're speaking great. my language. <laughs> you know, so those little things matter to me they choosing do who to work with, because I trust them more. I'm having more fun. It feels more creative, right? There's certain things that I think, you know, don't rely on just the thing you're selling. Really show people how you show up for them. Really show people how you know how to make things better in their world by coming up with different ideas to make their life easier. So instead of a form, I'll make you feel with, like every copywriter will tell you to do or a brand brief or this, that. We ain't going to do any of that because I already know you can't write. So why am I making you write? <laughs> instead, we'll get on a Zoom call, record the call. You do what you do best, talk it out, right? I love Hired, that. In my well, opinion. Seriously, I love that idea. That is brilliant. Brilliant. Because... <laughs> Yeah, because it's, if you if you need the help, it's because you're not so great at it. So making me fill out a whole thing and write all these things I out know. that I don't know how to do anyway. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's one of those things, like it would never have occurred to me that way, to do it that way. Mm. I, I will say that my favorite mm. thing about the podcast is the fact that people can listen to it, can watch me on the videos, and then they can see what I'm like. And if they think I'm crazy or I'm a lot, they don't have to work with me. They can see exactly. who I am and then... And it's wonderful. It weeds out lots of people mm -hmm. that would not be compatible. Yes, anyway. totally. Because right? it's not even just about who you're working with. It's who you're definitely not working with. And mm -hmm. when you have a very strong <laughs> personality, it gets across very clear. <laughs> well, also a distinct personality. Like, you know, as much as you will... Um, you know, kind of, kind of deter or, ugh, those people will be like, that's not, that person's not for me. Excellent. Because that means you're so distinct about how you show up and honest about who you are that the people that are really attracted to that would be 150% more attracted to you because you're not in that middle ground of being neutral. You know, you're not just trying oh, to be yeah. liked by everybody. You're really just showing up and going, this is who I am. I'm not for everybody, but these are the things that I believe in and I care about. And if you feel that way too, and if that pulls some heartstrings for you as well, then maybe, maybe we might get along. Right. So I think I'm a huge believer in like really making someone disgusted almost at you. Like, oh God, <laughs> that person. So not what I'm talking about, not what I want, because yeah. the, the other end of the spectrum, that other person's going, holy crap. It's like, you're in my head and I, I want to talk to you because it just feels so natural for us to be together or for us to work together. Yeah. I mean, it, it saves us all so much time, but it was very hard yes. to do that in the beginning because you're like, oh, mm. I have to be, especially coming from like banking, you know, I expected I had to be in a suit for my sh like headshots and like, you know, like that kind of thing. Like it has to be very professional and I have to be not crazy, you know? <laughs> and then over the years being able to say, no, 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 this is, uh, who I am or this is how I'm going to act or this is my business. So that's a hard thing. That transition was very hard, <laughs> very mm. hard to get. Yeah. Comfortable, I always say like kind of take off, taking off that mask because we've yeah. had to wear a mask in corporate, right. To mm -hmm. be a particular polished, right. Uh, be on brand with who we work for. So yeah, it takes time. And I think people find out, you know, it's not an overnight thing. People always say to me, they're like, I don't know who I'm supposed to be. And I was like, don't give yourself some grace. It's like, you just got a divorce. You know, and you're trying to figure out, yes. right? Like, who, who do I want to date going forward? Uh, too fresh, too new. Just think about how to take care of yourself. Just think about what are some small things you can do to recognize yourself again, right? And to be aware of who you are without this marriage, without this role. Because it is kind of like a marriage, isn't it? Our jobs, we are married to it. We've been oh, with yeah. it for a long time. So when we cut that off or we leave it and transition from it, it can feel very much like our identity is also taken away from us because that was a huge part. Work is a huge part of our identity. So be great, gracious about it for you. Don't be, be patient as well and allow yourself to come back to the authenticity of who you are, not overnight, but by doing a little bit of different things and just seeing how you feel. I always say, just try it on for size, like a coat. You know, maybe I'm this today and see how that feels. If you don't like it, you can take it off and try it on a different coat until the right coat fits well, right? I love that. I love that message because um, even though you are on a wonderful island, you're in this wonderful place, um, you don't have to go that far to be, 
You don't have to move away to a, to a, as a I was going to say desert island, but De- Bali is not a desert island. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> tropical. <laughs> It's pretty nice. Um, you don't have to go that far away. You can start making these intentional decisions in your business and your life. Totally. Like you're saying, a little bit of time right right now working mm-hmm. on that. And I think that's a wonderful message. So one thing that I used to do when I used to walk to walk to work, because I was already knew I was gonna quit, but I remember going, Oh God, it's the same thing I do every day. I eat the same food, I go to the same gym, I do the same thing. It mm-hmm. felt really like I had no opportunity to color out of the lines, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I would do something really small. It seems so insignificant, but I remember thinking, I'm just going to take a different route to work every day. Just a different road. I'll walk to, I'll still walk to work, but I'm just not going to do the same neighborhood. And just that made a difference in what I was seeing, how I feel, and just the intentionalness of or, or how, that, you know, being intentional to start my day that way to say, I want to see a different thing today. Even though I'm going to that destination, I don't want to mm-hmm. go, but I can control how I get there what I listen to in the morning, right? Things like that, right? So just making these tiny little changes seems so stupid, right? Like different walk to work. It is a huge change in how we see, how we feel, how we, um, you know, sort of absorb a new reality. That reminds me of my last couple of, like the last ending of uh, my banking career. I was in the city and I was walking through the flower district on purpose. I would walk um, the long way, so that in the flower district in New York City, there's just streets and there's just flowers all over the sidewalks because they're like the florists will come and Amazing. pick up like big, huge, whole, like wholesale orders. And I just started gardening and I would like go through and test myself like, oh, wait, what is that? Is that a, da- a Gerber daisy? Is that a this? And I would like that was my I, I would look forward to it every morning, get off the train. And instead of being miserable, I would walk through the flowers and it was like the best part of my day. So I, I haven't thought about that. I love years, that. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh God, I'm gonna have to see your bouquets now. Now that I know that's your talent as well. <laughs> oh no, I know I'm not a flower arranger. I'm much better at vegetables. <laughs> I can. I'm not just growing everywhere right now. There's really my flowers are amazing. Yeah, oh, Lydia, this you're is like I want to feed my family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we just built a greenhouse. I'm super excited. I would talk about that all day, but that's we don't awesome. have six hours for gardening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. It has been such a wonderful conversation. Where can everyone find you? Well, my best place is screwthecubicle.com, especially on the homepage is where uh, you can find all my free stuff in the sense of where to get started. I mentioned in the beginning of this interview that most people find me on YouTube. So if you want that sort of shortcut link to YouTube or just type in screw the cubicle on youtube.com. You'll find my channel. This is always the best place to start because everything's sort of organized by playlists. So depending on where you're at, whether you're in a career transition at the start of a business or you already started a business and want to make it sort of more aligned with sort of your lifestyle choices and so forth, every, there's a playlist for everybody depending on your starting point. Um, and then I think a really good place to start if like, you know, if this conversation we had today inspired you to think about what what kind of business is right for me? You know, um, how do I start the inaugural step of searching for my sweet spot of meaningful work and things like that? Um, I would encourage people to take my free quiz, which is also on my website. So screw the forward slash quiz. Um, it's only nine questions and what it's going to do is going to help you define sort of based on your personality type, what sort of service-based business model is right for you. And more importantly, how do you show up for that business model in a way that feels unique to you and your values and a few ideas for people of like, what are some offer types? You know, what are ways you can earn an income mm-hmm. with this kind of person, personality type in this model, just to spark some inspiration. And then I'll support you more in upcoming emails of how to think about your work transition, reinventions and redefining uh, what work life, uh, your work life will look like for you. So any of those resources, I think is a great place to start. I love it. I love it because you, yeah, when you're trying to figure out what, what to do next and you don't have any clue, just having someone be able to kind of give you ideas and say, these things are possible or anything mm-hmm. you can come up with. And I love that idea because sometimes you just, it's hard to start on a blank page. So, mm-hmm. so thank true. you. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we will see everyone else next week. Thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have an agency or want to create one, come join my Facebook community. Get your agency together, where we talk all the things growing and scaling your agency. For show notes and more info on all the things, head over to ReynoldsOBM.com. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at ReynoldsOBM. And finally, if you enjoy this podcast, I would love for you to give us a review on iTunes.